Good afternoon, and welcome to Insight Tech Talk. Uh, my name is John Dathan, and I have the privilege to lead Insight Canada. And joining me today is Darren Lloyd. Uh, Darren came to us through the acquisition of PCM as Vice President of our Professional Services Organization. Welcome, Darren. Thanks, John. Glad to be here. Yeah. Um, I want to take a, a little bit of time today. We've had so much energy in the marketplace around Windows Virtual Desktop, and Microsoft is asking us to help out clients. We've done more of their work than any other partner in Canada. But I, I actually believe that people aren't as familiar with it. They sort of nod and say, oh, yeah, WVD, Windows Virtual Desktop. I, I wanted to take some time today and really explore that. So maybe just at a high level, what is WVD? Yeah, um, so Windows Virtual Desktop is really Microsoft's fully managed desktop virtualization solution in the cloud. So it runs in Azure, and really you can think of it like the cloud evolution of remote desktop services and without all of the infrastructure management requirements. And so it offers full-featured native client support for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, and you can also access it pretty much from any browser because it's got uh, HTML5 support built in. And so it's it's sort of like the cloud evolution of Microsoft's remote desktop services platform. So why do people want to deploy VDI? Is that more important now than ever or? I mean, it's been around for a while and it's always been, there's always been a use case for VDI. Um, primarily organizations are attracted to VDI because it, it enables them to sort of centrally manage all of their desktops in the data center. So they're running a bunch of VMs on, on a server or a server farm rather than managing a whole bunch of, you know, um, disparate spread out in individual endpoints. So that's one, one benefit. The other one is, um, to keep the operating system, the data, and the apps separate from the end device. So to create a bit of a security barrier to protect data leakage and you know, maybe corporate information going on to a personal device. Uh, and, and then the other big one, honestly, is when you have applications that need to be close to the server backend or the database or whatever, and you want to enable remote work for your users, but they need to kind of be running those apps right next to the the server itself. And so, by running the desktops in the data center, right, you know, in proximity to uh, to those services, you can give a better end user experience. Oh, okay. So you mentioned you know being in the cloud a couple of times, and more traditional VDI we think of as being in a private in, in your own data center. So. What are the challenges with having it in that traditional way that this solves? Yeah, I mean, it, there's there's actually a number of, of challenges with that architecture because, first of all, you have to stand up a fairly complex infrastructure of, you know, load balancers and gateway servers and brokers and then the whole VDI, you know, VM farm. Uh, you've got to have a way for users to securely log into that infrastructure. And so you have to have web services and portals. And really, those projects, I've been a part of uh, some of those projects in the past, and they end up becoming very time consuming, very costly, very complex. And then the ongoing management of you know, maintaining and upgrading those environments can be a huge burden for organizations. So you're really and, leveraging the full IaaS from the public cloud and not having to build it specifically around one application such as VDI. Well, actually, um, even better than that. So what, what Windows Virtual Desktop does is it takes all of that infrastructure that I mentioned, you know, the brokers and the gateways and the load balancers and the management portal, and it packages it up into a platform as a service, so PaaS offering uh, that Microsoft okay. fully manages for you. So it's it's essentially giving you all of that scalability and all of the, that management plane as a service, and then you plug the VMs and the you know the applications and the desktops into that, and uh, and so it's a it's a huge you know benefit in terms of lowering that upfront cost and complexity of spinning up the environment and the ongoing management uh, overhead. Huh. Yeah. So are there other reasons why WVD specifically? Well, the big one, so there's a couple. First of all, because it's running in the public cloud, you have that hyperscale sort of unlimited capacity model. You can scale up or scale down and you're paying for only what you use. And so as you can imagine, 
in in a dynamic kind of you know macroeconomic environment that we're in where, where organizations have had to scale down rapidly and enable remote work but at some point they're going to probably need to scale back up and potentially still have all of their workforce remote how do you you know you if you're going all on prem you're over provisioning for kind of the 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 peak load rather yep. than being able to sort of elastically expand and contract. So there's that. Um, and you can really choose any size of VM. So you may have some users that just need kind of bare bones, you know, they just office, the office suite, which incidentally is part of like Office 365 is just part of one of those built in uh, images that you can provision out of Azure. But you may have some really high end, you know, GPU intensive workloads that you need to run. Well, you can just choose that as an option. for. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and actually, one of the big ones is in the past, it was never possible to have a multi-session. And when I say multi-session, I mean multiple users logging into the same Windows uh, 10 or Windows you know, 7 or whatever, Windows desktop operating system at the same time it simply wasn't possible. And so okay. sort of hacked our way around that by provisioning a server and then kind of dressing it up to look like a desktop with a few, you know, few visual hacks. And then giving that uh, to the end user as their virtual desktop. Um, now, only Windows Virtual Desktop offers the capability to have a multi-session Windows 10 VM. So now you can spin up a huge VM, uh, give it a ton of RAM, a ton of compute, and then have you know 10 or even 20 users logging into that same VM at the same time. Right. And that can actually optimize because we're getting higher density and maximizing the utilization of that resource. So now you can actually lower your costs and get more bang for your buck, so to speak, while keeping the user experience totally seamless to because they're actually on a Windows 10 yeah. VM. And so I'm better understanding this from IT. I'm better understanding this from the business financial model. But as the end user, now that mm -hmm. if I'm doing everything across my home internet because I'm, I'm there, what's the end user experience? So, I mean, the first thing that's super interesting about this is, as I mentioned earlier, you can run it on anything. And so if you can imagine, okay, you know, your workforce is, is largely having to be remote now, they're working from home, maybe they have Macs, maybe they don't even have a PC at home, maybe they have uh, just tablets and mobile devices. Well, this, is a, this gives you the ability to actually give them a full, their full corporate desktop from any device. So that's the first benefit. And that's actually a pretty strong use case. Um, but secondly, it really is a seamless experience. And so if they are actually accessing their corporate uh, virtual desktop in WVD off of a Windows 10 device, it integrates seamlessly. So the start menu, you can just publish apps directly to the start menu. You can um, pin them to the taskbar. You can copy and paste between local and, and uh, virtual apps. It really just feels like you're working on your local PC. And so I see a couple of advantages. So A, I can actually work on a more powerful device than the one I have. And because it's being, it's happening in the cloud, the compute and, and, and all those sorts of things, the bandwidth is less of an issue. We're just actually sharing the screen across. Yeah, you're just sending uh, mouse clicks and screen scrapes. And then, I mean, for anyone that's listening that's actually ever been a part of kind of virtualization and VDI environments, the big challenge, or even just anyone that's ever tried to use a roaming profile, it's a huge challenge. And one of the things Microsoft has done is they've got technology that virtualizes that entire user profile onto its own VHD, virtual hard disk, which in, uh, seamlessly attaches at logon. So whether it's a shared pool of VMs that you're logging into, whether it's a single multi-session uh, Windows 10 VM, or even one that you're maybe is dedicated to you, every user is gonna have that persistent user profile experience. So you, know, you make changes in your applications, you might move you know, your start menu around and your icons, it does now you're not going to lose that every time you log into you know a different session, which sometimes yeah. has been a big challenge with VDI. So that's another huge advantage of uh, WVD. Interesting, interesting. So to kind of ra round out the discussion, we got to think a little bit about the security, right? I mean, if if somebody can access, you know, as myself, they've got access to everything I do. So so talk a little bit about identity. Yeah, and it's all driven through Azure Active Directory. And so identity is the cornerstone of the solution. It's the way that we provision the VMs, it's the way that we provision the apps, it's the way we provision administrative uh, backend access to you know, the IT administrators and, and uh, 
and analysts and technicians. So it uses Azure Active Directory. It's a consistent single uh, sign-on experience for users and it roams from device to device. So really all the user needs to know is their corporate credentials, they log in, but from a security and hardening standpoint, we can enable multi-factor authentication. We can enable right. conditional access. So we could say, you know, you can't even log in unless certain conditions are met, whether that's location or, you know, whatever. And so for, for clients that are looking at this, if you have already have a, an Azure workload or two, or you've got Office 365, you already have an Azure Active Directory up and running, and this will plug seamlessly into that. Yeah. Well, and just like we use it, right? The multi-factor, you not only have to know everything about me, you also have to have, have my phone and yeah. and my face because it's face ID to activate it. So, um, exactly. so very secure. All right. So got a couple of questions. So I also hear a lot about Intune and Autopilot. Um, yep. Just so that we all understand, what's the difference between WVD, Windows Virtual Desktop, Intune, and Autopilot? So... Windows Virtual Desktop is the VDI solution, the cloud-hosted VDI platform. So it's it's a you know it's essentially a service that enables you to either bring your own Windows 10 corporate image or use one from the gallery and provide that either published app or full desktop experience to your users from any device anywhere uh, hosted in the cloud and manage all that infrastructure managed by Microsoft. Intune right. is actually the cloud-hosted uh, modern management platform for managing all of your desktops, whether they're physical, virtual, uh, on-prem in the cloud, tablets, or mobile devices. And so, you know, some, if you've ever heard of SCCM or System Center Configuration Manager, Intune is really the cloud version and the evolution of SCCM. It integrates with SCCM, um, but it's the device management platform. So, you know, if you want to run reports on what apps are installed or how many uh, you know devices you have and what version of the OS they're on and you know yeah. or you want to patch them and all that other stuff, that's what Intune is all about. Uh, and in addition to that, it provides really powerful mobile device yep. and mobile application management capabilities. So that's Intune. Now you mentioned Autopilot. That's a feature of Intune, and it's a really cool technology because I mean, as a former SCCM guy myself. I spent a lot of time playing around with and actually architecting and implementing solutions for, for customers to help them manage their imaging and OS deployment processes. And I got to tell you, that gets really complex, especially when you start to introduce more and more devices because you've got drivers, you've got firmware, you've got all kinds of different applications, and you have to have these really complex task sequences that are able to detect, okay, what hardware am I on? Now i got to inject all the drivers. Well, what if you could just take the device as it ships from the manufacturer with you know, their gold image on it that's perfectly tuned for that hardware, it has the, the, all the right drivers and everything, and then layer in your corporate policies, your, your corporate applications, you know, your certificates, everything you need to turn that from a off-the-shelf consumer device into a fully managed, secure corporate device. That's what yeah. Autopilot does. And all you need is an internet connection and your username and password for that to work. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, I think most clients, they're going to want the result of this. They don't actually want to do this. So maybe we can close out, just talk a little bit about how Insight is helping clients. I know we've, we've actually, we've done quite a large number of these clients in, in Canada um, in the last sort of, well, since COVID started in particular, but how is it that we're helping clients? So we can essentially implement this from end to end. Um, we can do the architecture, we do the deployments, we work with your team to understand your application requirements and everything. But what we've done and, and what I'm really proud of is we've kind of positioned ourselves in Canada as the go-to WVD partner for Microsoft. Yep. You know, one of the things you mentioned early on in this conversation is they came to the table saying, hey, you know, how can we help our clients in this in this um, global pandemic situation where remote work is such a, a huge requirement and, and companies are kind of scrambling to figure out what to do. And they came to the table with a, a bucket of funding and they said to partners, hey, if you guys have solutions that can help our customers with this use case, bring them forward and we'll go kind of co-sell and position those. And so we came forward with our WVD Fast Start and mm -hmm. ultimately we ended up doing over half of those deployments um, that, in, that Microsoft funded in Canada. And 
as part of doing that, what we did was we really built up our best practices on our own internal IP to automate this, to make it really, you know, seamless and have a really good handover and tra transition operations for our clients. So we can absolutely get that up and running. We can manage it if that's uh, of, of interest. Um, and then obviously with the Intune and the, and the uh, Autopilot and SCCM and Windows 10, we've done dozens of those. Um, and we can easily, you know, do the planning, architecture and deployment and management for those as well. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Well, Darren, thanks for spending time with us today. Uh, I think this technology is, you know, so many of our clients are looking for help in this area, particularly at the time we're in. And clearly, we're going to be in this time for a little bit while. So thanks for your time today, Darren. Thanks for joining us, folks. Thank you.